If you're a music producer, you can learn from Knock too. Heck, if you make any kind of music, you can learn from Knock too. So then what sets him apart? Is there some music production hack that we don't know about? There's gotta be a secret plugin or something. Maybe a template in Ableton that he uses. <laughs> FL Studio. This is my nightmare. In this video, I'm gonna break down three of Noctu's songs and show you the actual practical techniques that he uses. This is the kind of stuff that you can apply right away and to any genre of music. I'm also gonna show you a little exercise you can use to practice the stuff that I talk about today. Plus, if this is like your third or fourth video of mine that you've watched in a row, please subscribe. If not, don't worry about it. Noctu has two words for his success, good ears. Because of this, let's talk about simple sound theory. This means I won't be going too deep into sound design techniques because a lot of those rely on having really specific setups and hardware and plugins. And that's just not the point of this video. So if a song or idea or melody doesn't sound good on a simple sound like a saw wave, a guitar, a piano, then all the sound design that you put in it isn't gonna help it at all. And to prove this, let's take a listen to Writing this into the piano roll, the melody looks like this and sounds like... Now there are three key factors to why this melody is catchy and memorable. I'm talking articulation, antiphony, and Ah, uh, note selection. Couldn't think of another A word to put there. Let's start off with articulation. This is a term that I borrowed from classical music, which basically determines the length of the note through terms like legato, staccato, and slur. Now, why do I bring boring old music theory terminology into it? We're here to make bangers, not classical snoozers. Simply, this is what adds the humanity to your melodies. It gives purpose to you turning your envelope knobs or choosing the lengths of your MIDI notes. Noctu, as you can see here, uses a different combination of MIDI note lengths to bring life to this melody, especially in the one that we just listened to from like the long ones here to the short ones here. It adds this pull and push effect to the melody simply by changing the note lengths. There's one more small thing you might notice. When I played piano growing up, my favorite thing to play in the songs were these little notes that you'd tap right before moving on to the note you were actually supposed to play. Now these were called grace notes. And to my ears, they sounded really cool and just added that tiny bit of flavor to an otherwise normal melody. And you'll notice that Noctu does the exact same thing here. and it actually ends up accentuating that one note. So it gives it an extra bit of push just for that one note. And that's a really powerful thing to add to your melodies. For maximum effect, it's best to put the first one slightly off and then have the note adjacent to it in the, in the proper key. So if we were in the scale, it would be the note right next to it. And that sounds really cool, but Let's make it sound even cooler with Antiphony. Isn't that a Taylor Swift song? Antiphony is better known as call and response. That's right. The technique that seems to set knock to apart from most other producers. A lot of the house scene is designed to be hypnotic and repetitive, which is great for dancing, good for setting a vibe. So to hear antiphony in house is super rare, which is why Knock 2's song feels so much more energetic. Call and Response challenges this notion of hypnoticness by adding two distinct melodies that are both different but relate to each other at the same time in the main line of a song.
While it's fun to lose yourself in a groove, the fact is humans enjoy conversations and Antiphony mimics that entire thing. You like it when I talk to you. You like asking questions and getting an answer back. You could almost think of this as question and answer as well. So let's look at how he does it here in Make You Sweat. In the main riff for Make You Sweat, it starts with a more open melody. And I mean that by the notes taking up the whole range of the octave here. So from F sharp three all the way up to E four. Versus the response phrase here, which only uses three notes and just bounces back and forth between them. Listen to how much shorter and more compact it is. And the point of all this is to add contrast to the song. By having very different parts to your melodies, it just makes that song a little bit more interesting. And this is not only where he does the call and response action. If you look down at the bass line here, instead of staying on the root note on the bass, like a typical house song would probably just have it loop like this. After the first four bars, he adds a little riff to the bass line. So you get a full call and response. And what's cool about this is that it doesn't take up the same amount of time as the call phrase of the melody. It's actually cut in half. Even though the call phrase of the main line is two bars, and then the response phrase is another two bars, for the bass he only does one and one. And that adds this cool like dimension to it. So play together. And it even goes further down when the bass line actually progresses. So it's a bunch of different levels of call and response complementing each other, adding complexity, even though all he's done is just move a few notes around and that's how you get moments like. I challenge you next time you listen to your favorite album or live set, listen to how other musicians incorporate this style of songwriting. So if you find your music is uh, feeling forgettable and boring, try incorporating antiphony. But you do all this and you're like, dang, how do I guarantee to make this even sound good? And that brings us to our third thing, note selection. And this is as basic as music gets, but it goes back to picking your scale. So by picking a minor scale and having its tonal center be F sharp, it keeps the melody from becoming cheesy. So you look back on the melody, starts a lot of the time on that root note, on that tonic, and that's how you set the tonal center, especially in the second phrase here. It keeps coming back down to that tonal center. He also keeps his melody simple, sticking to only four or five notes. So in this phrase, he only uses F, A, B, C, and E, five notes. <laughs> uh, in the response phrase, here he's only using three notes. So if you're having trouble figuring that out, you're like, dang, I don't know how to write that type of stuff. Any DAW will have a scale feature. Select your scale. Let's do our F sharp like Noctu does. And instead of just picking major or minor, look for one that says pentatonic. So you can see that it only picks one, two, three, four, five. And oh, would you look at that? Those are the five notes that Noctu uses in Make You Sweat. The pentatonic scale is locked to five notes that are designed to sound good together no matter what. So we can go buck wild. So here's a little exercise you can try if you wanna get better at writing Noctu style melodies. So first thing you wanna do is uh, not run to the YouTube comment section and ask, hey, what was that absolute slapper in the intro? Well, that's me. I made that song, and if you want an in-depth uh, video on how to make that exact song, I have this video here. And on top of that, the song that you hear in that very video, and that's in the very beginning of this video, is out right now. So you can go stream it on streaming services, and that's all made possible through this video sponsor, DistroKid. That's right, with DistroKid, I'm able to upload all the music I've been working on to all the streaming services. And this year, 
one of my resolutions is to release more music. So, DistroKid is the perfect way to do that because for only $23 a year, you can upload an unlimited amount of songs to those platforms, to all the streaming platforms. It allows you to start releasing independently and even if you want to get signed by a label, well, you got the clout to back it up if you can uh, push your own numbers as well. Plus, you keep 100% of the royalties and more importantly, unlike Taylor Swift, ownership of your masters. Well, now she does. But, you know, there was that whole thing. Plus, there's a ton of bonus features included with your subscription to help polish or promote your music. But I'm going to talk about that another time. And if any of that sounds awesome, you can also get 7% off your first year with my VIP code because you watch my channel. Thank you, DistroKid, for sponsoring this video. And the second step of the exercise you want to do is start off with just like any baseline. I'm going to make a MIDI clip, select two bars. So you want to write with a uh, tonal center in mind, select the minor pentatonic scale. I'm going to pick F sharp minor pentatonic. And like I said earlier, it locks into five notes that are designed to sound good together. So you can go crazy, go random and get a feel for what each note sounds like one after the other. And with enough practice, your ears get good. So with the tonal center in mind, that being the root note, F sharp, Let's write on that. Let's start there. Heck, we could even go an octave lower. Why not? Mm -hmm. And I'm just writing on the highlighted ones. We can even fold the scale. And let's try incorporating some articulation by shortening these. And I want to accent this E here, so let's add the grace note. Maybe we'll only do it on the first bar. And now we're going to split those two bars that we made and the second bar just try to make a response phrase so try picking different notes as we can see from this one it's a it's a little bit open it goes from the f to the f so if i take off the scale you can see how much more open it is so on this one on the second one let's try and compact it a little bit and keeping articulation in mind I'm just going to copy the rhythm that Knock 2 uses. And then copy the articulation and then just repeat. And your goal is just to practice having different rhythms, making it be like the opposite of what this is. And I even have another melody video that helps you structure melodies as well, which you can apply to this. But that's a whole other thing. You can even try putting it onto different sounds now that you have the idea. Like listening back, oh, I, I'd like to change the articulation on that. And I could even do something more like this. Now I'm just, now I'm just producing. The vibes based producing has begun. Well, it sounds like the happy version of it. Now it just sounds like we have Noctu at home, but you get the idea. We are practicing. But remember, this is vibes-based producing. Don't get too hung up on the technicalities. If it sounds good, if it sounds good. So to test if you've been paying attention, let's take a look at the melody to Dash Star. What do you notice? What do you see that he's doing? And if you answered articulation, and note length, you are correct. Look at that. Look at all the different note lengths that he's using throughout this really, really simple melody. Two note melody, but he's adding so much life to it just because he's changing the note lengths.
there is one more thing that's affecting the articulation of this. That's sidechain working. So it's taking a little bit off the beginning of the note and giving it that pump effect that you hear in a lot of EDM. So that's a, two things that make Dash Star super special in regards to note articulation. But that is not all. Let's actually get into a bit of sound design. And I'm not a great sound designer, but Sam Myers here on YouTube is. And he did a really great recreation of Noc 2's Dash Star lead using only one instance of serum which is really impressive but if you look a little deeper into how he makes it and into what the sounds are actually made up of it's three layers something that looks like this so this is the main the one that you've been hearing then he has one layer that's one two three four semitones down and then another layer that's one two three semitones up and that actually makes a major chord And this is just saw waves. And when I turned it into a chord, it sounds a lot closer to what the Dash Star lead actually sounds like. So when you're struggling with finding layers to make your song feel more full, just going back to the basics and asking yourself, hey, can I make a chord out of it? And then assign different chord voices to different sounds. And so our root note is on. We have the uh, third on. And the fifth on and all together with the drums. We still have knock two at home, Cam. Okay? Not him, okay? But you can learn from him. That's the key. Let's look at one more example, which really solidifies all the techniques I've been talking about with a couple extra twists. Now, in simple sounds, this riff is ridiculously open. The real life of this sound comes from the articulation. So long to short, shorter to short. Play this all like this. And it just sounds lifeless and boring. Boom, add life to a song just by changing the note length. And then the other cool twist is in our scale here, actually, it seems to be it's not exactly it and this is probably not what they actually set out to do but going through all the different scales that ableton has this is the one that it's closest to and it's the eight tone spanish scale and that makes a lot of sense because dylan francis who he collabed this song with started out making Moombatone, which is very latin influenced so maybe this is more of dylan's influence but making the tonal center of the song in a completely different ballpark by exploring different scales outside of Western music convention is something that you can do for more interesting sounding melodies. Now, the next little twist I heard is an almost way too obvious use of call and response. You might have heard it too. So we have our call here, our response here, and what are you hearing? It's the synth doing the call and the vocal doing the response. <laughs> like very minimal synth in the response phrase. So that's definitely knock two influence coming in. And these are just the things that I noticed. If you're hearing cool melody tricks in some of these things and I'd miss them, let me know down in the comments. So what's even the point of analyzing this all? What does all of these things have in common? Well, if you're paying attention at the beginning, it all goes back to good ears. Because at the end of the day, music production, making music, writing music, it's all vibes based anyway. I could describe to you every little technique that exists in the world, but if the song just doesn't make you feel something, then what's the point? Because chances are anyway, Noctu probably does all this stuff subconsciously. He does it because it sounds good to him. So how do you even get there? Be open-minded. Listen to genres outside the music you make, artists you wouldn't normally listen to. Through practice and understanding what you enjoy, learn a few rules, then break them. 
and most importantly, be true to yourself. And the proof is with Nock too. Back when he was 16, he would be DJing high schools and clubs on the weekends where he focused on the art of learning how to DJ while learning music production, making his own remixes and playing them out. Yet, despite all of that, he was still a nobody. So when he met with ISOXO, he focused on doing DIY stuff instead, throwing his own events, putting in his own work to achieve his dreams. Fast forward to now and he's recently sold out four nights at the LA Shrine. He's a new addition to 88 Rising's roster of artists and probably your favorite house producer's favorite producer. Plus, there's something really special about a kid from San Diego who didn't use his parents' deep pockets to fund his icon collective schooling and just learned everything off of YouTube. YouTube tutorials are the best. There's this producer, Knock2. That's okay. literally how he learned how to make music. Just like you are right now. Now go make some bangers. By the way, if you got to this part of the video, you're a freaking legend because making this video took way longer than I thought. So I want to give a very special shout out to all the VIPs on Patreon whose names are going across the screen right now. Your support allows me to continue making videos like this and cuz you're all the way over here, you'll find the project file that I made for this video over there along with most of the songs you've heard on this channel complete with presets for Serum Vital, Ableton Racks, and even more in-depth production breakdowns. Okay, that's all. I'm about to go stream now. See you on Twitch.